and let's do a clap. My name's James Baldwin and for the past five years, sim racing has been a major part of my life. Since deciding to move away from real life racing, sim racing has presented me with incredible opportunities to compete in some of the world's biggest esports tournaments. I've seen sim racing develop into one of the most competitive forms of esports on the planet, and it's no surprise that sim racing is now expected to reach a market value of $10 billion by 2025, with the overall gaming market expected to reach a value of $339 billion by 2027. While these numbers sound incredibly impressive, I've never actually considered the environmental footprint of esports and gaming as a whole. What is my energy consumption? Where does it come from? What effect am I having on the planet and is this something that's easy to address? I want to learn more about what impact the gaming industry is having on climate change and what improvements we as a community can action together to make our space more eco-friendly. I also want to explore the possibility, if any, of running my sim on renewable energy before the next round of my SRO eSports tournament coming up in eight weeks. I'm normally sim racing between two to four hours a day against the biggest teams worldwide, against the biggest drivers worldwide, all from my bedroom. And it's racing esports, so it's basically racing cars, but on a sim, on a game. And it's, it's pretty crazy. Like McLaren have a team, Ferrari have a team, Mercedes have a team, so the biggest brands have their own esports teams. But um, I've not really been conscious about how much I've been on the sim over the last few years. I mean, I have between 90 and 100 races per year. So I can only imagine, you know, that uses a lot of energy training, racing, competing in all of them, it must use a lot. So, I mean, gaming as a whole, as an industry, it's one of the few industries where climate change is not really spoken about. And uh, I suppose I want to change that. So this is the sim room containing the big boy 10,000 pound simulator, which I do all my racing with two races a week at the moment. So extremely busy. I'm just gonna jump in in a minute. Um, we've got a uh, pro sim rig chassis, which is solid as anything. I've got the Fanatec shifter, Fanatec handbrake, uh, the Fanatec CSO Elite wheel with the Formula V2 rim on it, and then the Fanatec V3 pedals down the bottom, all hooked up to the, the big gaming PC around the back, and then the triple screen monitors, which are all top spec, and they look, they look sick. They're really immersive. It's a passion of mine, you know, driving and racing. So to do it as a job is, uh, is really, really cool. I know I must be using a lot of energy with the gaming PCs in my room, with the highest end graphics cards, CPUs, uh, the hardware on the sim rig, the lights, the monitors, like the, overall I must be using a hell of a lot of energy and I'm one of thousands if not millions of sim racers or gamers worldwide. So you know, it's quite a sobering thought when you think about how much energy we must all be using. So with the aim of changing my habits and creating a more eco-friendly sim rig for my upcoming SRO esports race, I set up a call with Jackson Ryan, a journalist from CNET who's been researching the impact of gaming on climate change. Morning Jackson, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm James, I'm a sim racer or gamer back in the UK. Um, it's my job to, to compete online virtually and race. Um, so I have a lot of gaming equipment and Recently, I've been starting to have my eyes open to climate change and is gaming as a whole having an impact on the environment? Gaming from a, a I guess, a consumer perspective, like one-on-one, -on -one, we're all contributing in some way, but that does take a little bit of the responsibility, I guess, away from the bigger corporations, right? So for instance, Microsoft just recorded in 2021, a higher amount of scope three emissions. These are emissions that um, come from people using their products. Right. So yeah. you have this kind of like problem where the companies are conscious of it and they do want to make a difference. It's just really hard to kind of get to that point because carbon's being emitted from all these different sources. What do you think the role is of gaming PCs and next gen consoles on that impact? Gaming's a huge industry, as you know. Yeah. I mean, it's your job, right? So you, yeah. you have this industry that's only getting bigger and bigger. And so the impacts on the climate are only going to get bigger and bigger unless we shift to renewable energy sources. And so with a gaming PC, for instance, if you've got a, like a really, really souped up PC, top, top end graphics cards, your NVIDIA's, your AMD's, we're talking like top of the range stuff is really going to be 
generating a lot of energy. Recently, uh, someone showed me a setting where I could either go to energy saving mode or max performance. And they were like, oh, mate, if you get max performance, you're going to get more FPS. And so I did that. So that's not good. I might have to look at that again and maybe put the energy saving mode on. I get it, though, because there is that trade off, right? You want to have the best performance well, in these yeah. games, especially yeah. for, for yourself. Like you need to have that that high FPS. So it's one of those things, man, like maybe you're conscious of it, at least being conscious of it can change that behavior. And I think that's probably one of the more important factors when you're talking about climate and how an individual can make a difference. So do you think there should be more effort to make these more sustainable, more renewable? Yeah, one of them is adding things like energy saving modes into consoles. And that's a great first step. Supply chain is going to be a huge thing as we move forward, you know, over this next decade where climate action is really important. If you can essentially electrify like the way that you move your products around the world or move your consoles around the world, that would make a huge difference to how yeah, much carbon yeah, is emitted. Yeah. But also there's, there's solutions that you and I can do. Like, I mean, do you even kind of know how much carbon you're emitting? Like, do, w would that be something no. that you know? <laughs> no, that's the thing. I don't. Jackson had highlighted a very valid point. I had no idea of the impact of what I do and the effect it was having on the environment. So, to get a better understanding, I took up his advice and decided to calculate my own carbon footprint using an online carbon calculator. Do you offset any of your carbon footprint? No, I have never offset my emissions. Not consciously anyway, I've not really thought about it. And that was it, that's the last question. So, I believe now it's got all the information it needs to, to give me a carbon footprint, so. 15.3 tons of carbon per year. Oh my, 15.3 15 15 tons is 15,300 kilograms. That sounds like an awful lot of damage I'm doing to the environment, to be honest. So in total, my annual carbon footprint is equivalent to charging 1.8 million smartphones, consuming 1,500 gallons worth of diesel, burning 17,000 pounds worth of coal, using two homes worth of energy per year, and it would take 18 acres worth of forest to get rid of it all essentially, which, I mean, yeah, that's quite a lot. Taken aback by the size of my own carbon footprint, it was tough to digest that this score could be multiplied hundreds of thousands of times across the gaming community. And to help get my carbon footprint score back on track, I've been invited to Wales by Eon Energy UK to visit MySquim Wind Farm and speak with Harry, the site asset manager. With Eon being one of the key providers of renewable energy in the UK, I'm keen to hear about what practices I can adopt. Firstly, to make my lifestyle more eco-friendly, but also to see if competing in a sim powered by renewable energy is even possible. Hello, mate. Hello. James. Nice it's Harry. To nice to meet you. Welcome to My School Wind Farm. Thank you very much. So we're going to have a look around the wind farm and see what yes, you please. think. Yes, please. Yeah, looking forward to it. Brilliant. Let's go have a Let's look. Mice Gwyn used to be an open cast coal mine. Okay. So where we're standing now would have been half a mile deeper than what we're standing now. This is all man-made. We then regenerated it, planted the trees, and because of the tracks and the infrastructure here, we then decided to put a wind farm here. It's a 13 turbine site, which produces 26 megawatts. So wow. each one of these turbines produces two megawatts each. And so a wind turbine, like obviously wind rotates it, but how does it actually work, you know, beyond that point? So the wind turbine will then point towards where the wind is coming from. Okay. It will then pitch the blades to be able to catch the wind and that will create then torque to then send through a gearbox and into a generator producing electricity. So how much energy does a wind farm produce? This site will produce about uh, enough electricity for about 170,000 homes a year. Jeez. So an easy way to put it is for every time that that turbine rotates once, there's enough electricity to power one house for eight hours. One revolution's eight hours? Yes. Yeah, so, so obviously it all, all depends on the wind and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you look at how many times this is turning just constantly. Oh, relentless. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when it all produces. For those looking to reduce their, their carbon footprint, what role does the wind farm play, you know? So you're going to think there's no greenhouse gases or anything actually being produced from these turbines. Okay. So. Eon buy the electricity from this site. Right. So it's all green energy being produced. Yeah. And then Eon then pass that to their customers, you know, as a renewable energy using the Eon Next program. Gotcha. Okay. So, for, you know, from my point of view, if, apart from going on a renewable energy plan, what can I do at home to reduce my overall footprint? So you can start simply with just a smart meter, which just shows yeah. 
how much energy you're using in a house. So when your computer is running, TVs, even your kettle, and how much actually energy that takes. Then you can look at putting uh, like solar panels on your roof. Yep, yep. And then look at it, putting even smart batteries in your house. That power the solar panels. So the solar panels then produce the energy, that then stored in a battery. So then in the evening, you know, the energy that you've been saving during the day into this yeah. battery can be used in the night then. That's good. So if I got a race, uh, a sim race at night on my rig, I could use the, the power from the batteries so to, to run that. still using renewable energies from your solar panel in the house. That's good. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Maiskawin isn't just home to the wind farm, it also has an off-road track that has held stages of the Wales Rally GB and has even been used as a proving ground for cars such as the Odyssey 21, a fully electric SUV car used for the electric rally series Extreme E. So not only do you have a site that produces 100% renewable energy, but an off-road track that's helping to facilitate the future of electric motorsport. So we're now at the highest point on our site. So this is 1,200 metres above sea level, and this is where we get the best wind. So you can see from just this turbine here, that, where it's pointing. Is that, that looks bigger than the other one. So this is a 100 metre turbine here. Is that the biggest one? Yeah, so this is the biggest one on site, and for the location that it is. <laughs> it's enormous, man. And so it looks like, is that the coal, the coal mines over there that you were yeah, talking so about earlier? Yeah, in the backgrounds, we've got still an existing coal mine, which is still operating and you've just got you know, the past and the future next to each other. So how deep does that go? It's about 400 metres deep at least. It's almost going half down. a mile. It's so almost half a mile yeah, going yeah, down yeah. there. So that will eventually then be um, a railway testing place. Right. The idea is all the new electric trains are going to be tested there. Okay. And they're going to be using the power from this site as well. So it's another green energy project that we're trying yeah, to introduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For someone who's never really thought about it before, renewable energy is, is the ideal place to start, I'd imagine. Yeah, and this is yeah, the base of it, and hopefully we're going to get a lot more of it in the future. I well, know. Thank you, Harry, for having me along. It's been really interesting. Yeah, so, no problem. Thank you very much. Cheers. With the tournament starting in two weeks' time, it was essential that I started to implement some of the solutions I had learned from Jackson and Harry, starting off by switching my energy plan. Eon Next supplies energy through the national grid and into homes from sources such as Mysquim Wind Farm and biomass plants around the country. Signing up to the plan, it felt great to know my carbon footprint would be significantly reduced and I'd be able to compete from home in a sim powered by clean energy, something that I thought would be a lot more difficult than it was. Based on Harry's recommendation, I chose to install a smart meter. A smart meter is effectively a brand new type of electricity meter which shows users how much energy is costing in real time. I also began to start making other changes around the home, turning my sim off when I don't need it on, using a metal bottle instead of drinking out of single-use plastic bottles, as well as using less water. I'm very relieved and excited to start implementing these things into my life to get the carbon footprint down from 15.3 tonnes. So, you know, by the time the race comes around, I will be on the renewable energy plan and effectively I'll be doing the race on clean energy. So, yeah, nothing left now really apart from get practising, get warmed up so I'm competitive as possible for SRE Sports Round 3. This is only the start of my journey to a more sustainable life. I mean, there's still so much for me to do to reduce my carbon footprint. Stuff like solar panels, solar batteries, an air source heat pump, you know, I can't do all of them at once maybe to start with, but just doing one or two of them just to get me going is, uh, is the most important thing. My life has always centered around racing. For years, every day has been an opportunity for me to improve, to fight for that extra 10th on the track. It's what it takes to win, to be the best. That's what I've always wanted. I've not only learned about the impact of the gaming industry on the climate, but what solutions there are. Whether it's switching your energy plan to a renewable plan, installing solar panels or even just having a smart meter, it is possible to make a difference. In the space of eight weeks, I've been able to change my life for the better. Being able to train and compete in a sim powered by renewable energy fills me with optimism, knowing that it is possible for the gaming community to make a change collectively. We just have to take that first step to make that commitment. Throughout this whole experience, I have learned so much, like the stuff I wish I knew earlier in my life, but it's good I know it now and I can make changes and I have made changes. You know, I went to the wind farm, very inspiring, you know, 
it's possible. I've literally seen it with my own eyes. I just hope others do the same. You know, there's millions of gamers, including myself, out there. So the difference it would make if we all made changes would be huge. We have one planet, we need to save it, and I hope this documentary inspires others to make a change. My name's James Baldwin, and I'm taking action for climate.